Hi everyone, this is Dave and welcome to the very first Talking Tech Q&A. It's not the first questions and answers video that I've actually recorded for the channel, but it's certainly the first one since I made the changes to the format of the videos on Geekanoids. This particular area in the studio is almost complete. I'm just waiting on some artwork to go on the wall. Now, about two weeks ago, I put up a video just asking for you to leave questions in the comments section for this very video. A big, big thank you to all of you. I've got so many questions and I'm gonna try and answer as many of them as I can in this video. Now, let's just grab my iPhone 6S Plus. I'm gonna put my feet up actually. I've got a little stall just down in front of me, out of shot, so I can get nice and comfy for this video. So the first question is from Redman Power 32 What camera do you use for your videos? And what is your favorite tech that you showed on your channel? That is a really good question. Now I use a variety of cameras because I test cameras for the channel as well. I tend to use the latest camera that's come in to the studio. But the mainstream camera I use for my YouTube videos is the Panasonic GX8. I'm currently using it now. It's sitting around about three to four feet away from me. And on top of it is a Rode VideoMic Pro. Now I use other cameras as well. I also run a commercial video company where I make videos for businesses and I use different cameras for that particular business. Your second question is, what's the favorite tech that I've showed on my channel? Well, it's not a piece of small technology. It's very large in fact. And that was the Tesla Model S. Now, I really do think the future of electronic cars is very exciting indeed. And I just hope that I will drive one full time as my daily driver at some stage. It just excites me a lot how that technology is progressing. Next question is from Alexa Martin. You often say Geekanoids team, whereas in reality, it's basically just you. You've only once had another person, as far as I know, Jane, who swiftly disappeared. Why do you always say team? It seems like rather a leading question, but I'm happy to answer it. Primarily, it is me working in the business. The reason I say us, we, or team, is it gives the impression of a lot larger organization, and that, to me, seems a lot better, or it sounds a lot better. But in reality, you're assuming I don't have anyone else helping me. And in fact, I do have one person who works on the website and all of the other sales that I do, and also a second person that helps me with the commercial side of the business. So Geekanoise is in fact myself and two other people. Jane was a guest reviewer on the channel quite some time back, and it worked really well and I always have guest reviewers from time to time on the channel, so you'll see different faces appear in videos at some stage. So I hope that answers your question. Next question is from Jane Patel. Just noticed your Twitter bio states that you are the UK's longest running tech channel. Is there any basis to this claim? Short and sweet answer, I did some research and I really am pleased that I am one of the UK's longest running tech channels, almost 10 years now. Just after YouTube started, in fact, was when I actually launched the Geek Noise channel. Next one is from Russ B. And this is nice because it's not a question. Russ is a long time viewer and he just says, nice, smiley face, can't think of anything at the moment. Hope you enjoy a nice Sunday with your family, Dave. A big, big thank you to you for that, Russ. I really do appreciate it. Pro AC Guy one asks, are there any 4K resolution screens on mobile phones or tablets at this time or any coming soon? I don't know of any. If anyone who's watching this video does know of a 4K resolution smartphone, or was there one? I just suddenly remembered. I, I think there was one maybe from Sony? The model number escapes me. If you know what it is, leave it in the comment section below. And the next one is from Peter Podcorral. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Do you fly your DJI Phantom 4? Is the drone good? Well, breaking news here, I did not keep the DJI Phantom 4. 
I flew it a few times, it was a fantastic experience, but I only keep particular products in my sort of array of equipment that I use for videos that I'm gonna use regularly. And there are so many restrictions on flying, including the terrible weather we normally get here in the UK, that it really wasn't worth me keeping hold of it. So I no longer have the Phantom 4. Next question is from Michael Howe. Hi Dave, hi Michael. What do you think of 4K HDR? Well, I've talked quite a bit about this in previous videos. When 3D TV came out, it didn't really gel well with me. I didn't see uh, a, a really enjoyable experience. Things were quite blurred around the edges. The jump from standard definition television to HD, so 1080p, was absolutely fantastic. The jump from 1080p to 4K resolution televisions was notable at the right viewing distance, but the distance most people sit away from their televisions is uh, gonna make it negligible to really see the difference. The jump from sort of standard uh, color spectrum to HDR is gonna be a lot more noticeable than the difference between 1080p and 4K for most people. And I've seen some HDR footage and HDR televisions and it is fantastic. So if you are looking to upgrade, do look at HDR. Now there are two different versions of HDR. There's HDR10, which most sort of players and content is gonna support. And there's also HDR Dolby, I think it's called. Uh, so make sure that your TV that you're buying has either got both of those formats or indeed at least HDR10. I just wish there would just be one standard. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, next question is from Johnny D GTI. Hello Dave, my question is, I've read that the iPhone 7 might not be much of an upgrade if you own a 6S or 6S Plus. I have a 6S Plus here. What do you think and what features would you most like to see in the new iPhone? Well, I do agree, it won't be much of a change. I think the only thing we might see is the fact that Apple seems to be considering lightning connected digital earphones instead of three and a half millimeter audio jack, which will mean they can make their devices even slimmer. But I don't see it being a big sort of revolutionary change because why would Apple reinvent the wheel? They're gonna stick with what's been successful and just make evolutionary products. Now, what would I like to see? Well, it's something that I don't think we'll ever see in an Apple product, and that is expandable memory. I just wish they'd put a micro SD card slot in so that I could pump the memory up on my iPhone 6S Plus or the new iPhone 7 and put a 128 gigabyte SD card in there and have absolutely tons of storage space. But that's never gonna happen. Uh, Bosim asks, would you ever get nine to five? I think you're asking, would I ever get a nine to five job? Uh, I've had a nine to five job many, many years ago. I've been self-employed for getting on for 25 years now. And I don't think I could constrain myself to the nine to five. That said, even being employed instead of self-employed nowadays doesn't necessarily mean working nine till five. Things have changed a lot. So if I was to get a paid job and become employed, I'd look for something that was really flexible on the time that you could work. I don't think I could stick to the nine to five. Uh, Bosim also asks, have I ever used Kodi? Yes, I have, I've used it on Apple TV and then it stopped working. Uh, right, this is a really interesting question. This one is from Master Cosgrove. It's a really long question, so I'm gonna actually just sort of summarize it. Why did you choose the Fuji ecosystem and also he's asked, uh, why bother with a redundant lens? Uh, you've already got the uh, 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8. Why purchase the 56 millimeter 1.2 unless you're primarily doing portrait photography? Well, you're referring to my recent Fuji X system video. And I chose the Fuji ecosystem purely because it was getting a lot of really good reviews. I've reviewed Fuji cameras before. They're brilliantly made. I love the Fuji colors that are produced. The sensor is absolutely amazing and that really sort of uh, steered me towards that particular brand and ecosystem. With regards to the lenses, well the 16-55 to is a really good kit lens. That's a carry around everywhere lens. 
but I wanted something that was really going to gather a lot of light and the 56 millimeter prime and indeed a lot of prime lenses uh, do perform a lot better than something that's got a zoom uh, sort of focal range that's why I went for that prime lens so I hope that answers your question next one is from Juno Mac RC I have Toshiba what is a good video editing software for a beginner RC YouTuber? Two to three cameras, but I'll be getting different angles. People have told me Adobe Premiere. Well, indeed, your Toshiba will be running Windows 10, most likely, if it's a new computer. And the best video editor that I know for the Windows platform is indeed Adobe Premiere Pro. Next question is from Morton Bitterley. Dave, why do you think you use so long time to get over 100K at YouTube? Please answer in this Q&A video. Well, here's your answer. Yep, I've been on YouTube for almost 10 years, and yet it has taken me a long time to achieve that 100,000 subscriber mark. I think at the time of recording this video, I'm on about 112,000 subscribers. And the way I look at it is I've had sort of progressive growth of the channel, and it's been a really good journey. And to be honest, once I reached that 100K, which obviously was a goal for me, I'd be lying if I said different, I stopped looking at the numbers a long, long time ago because I enjoy just making content. Why did it take so long? I've got no idea really at all, other than to say I didn't use any tricks, I just stayed honest and true to myself, created content that I liked creating, uh, I didn't do things to really sort of push subscribers to the channel, I just created the content and enjoyed doing it. So the actual subscriber count was just something that came along with creating the content. I hope that makes sense. But great question. Uh, Bosim asks, uh, do you think you'll ever move on from YouTube? I don't think I will. I think I'll always do this so long as the platform treats me well because I love sharing. I love sharing the videos. I do it for the passion that I've got for technology and sharing information. And something funny, I wasn't going to even acknowledge this, but somebody called Dave Patel has responded to this question saying, after having wasted the last 10 years failing at YouTube and sitting in denial, he ain't giving up now. Well, sitting in denial is completely wrong. Not giving up, I never give up at anything I do because if you're passionate about something, why would you give it up? But I just thought that, that response was really funny. Okay, moving on swiftly. Uh, Shell, Shell Blair iPhone Vlogs asks, first PC you ever owned and first mobile phone, Apple or Windows, which one do you prefer? Also, do you think tablets are still a good thing to own? Wow, that's a lot of questions. Right, first PC, was probably, if I remember rightly, a ZX Spectrum, long, long time ago. Well, it might have been an Amstrad PCW9512, something like that. Uh, first mo mobile phone was Apple or Windows. Well, out of those two, it was an Apple iPhone. First mobile phone would have been something from Nokia, maybe a 3310 or one of the big brick phones many, many years ago. And do you think tablets are still good to own? Well, for certain things like uh, media consumption, social media, yeah, I think the tablet's absolutely fine. But if you're doing any sort of productivity, I'd still recommend an Ultrabook or a laptop. So I hope that answers your question. Adam Jones, just had Sky Q fitted and it's awesome. That is really good to know. Uh, and then uh, Adam goes on to ask, is that something you'll look to get? What's your current TV setup? Well, to be honest, I do like the Sky system. I had Sky uh, for a long, long time. I had Sky Plus. And the only thing that put me off was it is very, very expensive. And indeed, Sky Q, the only thing that's put me off getting that is the expense. And it's all about sort of justifying what you spend. And the type of television I watch is on a very casual basis. I'm often working or looking at my smartphone or a tablet whilst the television's on. If I want to watch a film, I rent it and sort of stream it. And SkyQ just is too expensive for me to justify putting that sort of money in each month. At the moment, I have Virgin Media. I get the TV element free with my broadband subscription, and I run that on a 4K LG 60-inch television. So that's my current setup. 
Um, but it is fantastic. I have seen it at a friend's house and I love the user interface. Okay, next one is Bella the Dog 2. Lots of talk recently about too much tech in people's lives and taking up too much time causing a distraction. Fact or fiction, discuss, keep up the great work, Dave. It is very, very true. I often see people going out for meals in restaurants and instead of them actually uh, sort of conversing with each other, they're looking into their smartphones, not even looking at the partner or the family around the table. And I think when technology is obtrusive like that, then it is too much. And the same sort of applies to if you're sitting in your lounge of an evening and you're watching television or browsing the internet. It's always good to try and take some downtime from technology and speak to the people around you. So I do agree with you. Charles Mann, Dave, you really, you seem to really enjoy tech. How much time do you spend enjoying it? And when did you get the tech bug? Uh, and then he goes on to just to say a few more comments. Thanks for your question, Charles. Um, I absolutely love technology. And my working day, which is normally from around about sort of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., is full on technology because I'm testing bits of equipment and getting the videos ready for the channel. In the evening, I use technology for maybe an hour while I'm watching television. Rest of the time, I try to take time away from it. When did I get the tech bug? What's my earliest memory of technology? Hmm. I would say it's probably I must have been around about seven or eight years old and my dad bought us this grandstand video game console where you could play Pong or various driving and sports games all with sticks and a dot on the screen and we spent hours turning the dial and train, trying different sort of variations of the games and that was fantastic. I remember that, it's a very very fond memory. So great question, Charles. Luke, Shrub Soul. Hi, Luke. Morning, Dave. It's a two-parter. What are your views on home automation? And do you have any Hue, Nest, Dropcam, etc.? My views on home technology is that it's moving at a really fast pace. A lot of people were quick to jump on a lot of this technology when it didn't really serve a purpose. And I think over the next sort of two, three years, things will be refined a lot and people will only invest in something that's really useful. For myself, I have a home security system, uh, which is a mix of Nest uh, and also the Netgear Arlo system and an alarm system as well. I also have Philips Hue for lighting and I just think it's absolutely fantastic. I really do. Next question, and the reason you saw me look off camera there is I've got a window over here in the studio and I just saw a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a pigeon walk along in front of the window and he's looking in the window. Go away, pigeon. Right, next question. Geek Snapshot. Uh, what did you want to be when you were a young lad uh, and looked forwards uh, and looked towards your future? If you were to start YouTube now, not 10 years ago, what would you do differently? Uh, when I was a, a young lad, all I wanted to do was work. I just knew I wanted to work. And indeed, when I was 15, I had my first job. I left school early. I had to have written permission from the headmaster and my parents. And I actually took up a job with Ordnance Survey and I worked on their maps. I was a digital mapper. Um, and that was what really sort of threw me into the world of work for technology. Um, and what did I want to do though if I looked towards my future back then? I just knew it was something technical. I'd always liked design, which sort of led me towards my graphic design experience. Um, it's a really hard question, very hard question indeed. What would I do different now if I was starting YouTube now than 10 years ago? <sighs> wow, that is a really hard question as well, because nowadays there are so many more content creators. And when I started 10 years ago, there weren't that many channels that were doing serious tech reviews. If I was starting now, there are so many tech channels, would I enter this same sort of sector? That is a really difficult question. I think if I was thinking smart and I was doing YouTube purely just to gain views, I'd probably be a daily vlogger. But that's hard in its own right. I know some people that do that every single day, they upload a video and kudos to them. It is a really hard job. Uh, Jamie Reed asks, what has happened to Apple 
Don't you think they're lacking behind? Where is the innovation gone? Yeah, I've tweeted about this as well and made various videos about it. And even with the iPhone 7 coming out very soon, I do think that Apple uh, are gonna play safe and they have lost a lot of their innovative ways. And I think that happened since Steve Jobs passed away. Uh, Tim Cook is, is very good at the helm of Apple, but they are very consumer focused. Uh, so for me, I'm sort of missing the innovation in the sort of Mac Pro and iMacs. Uh, and I do sort of get this underlying feeling that they're just playing it safe. And they really do need to start thinking on their feet and introduce some sort of new product to put them at the top of their game again. Or do something a bit brave rather than just... Uh, sort of giving us different iterations of products over the years. Really give us something exciting again. Otherwise, they're gonna have, I think they're gonna have some trouble. They're, they're never gonna fail, I don't think, but they're, they're not gonna keep their popularity. John Moose asks, Hi Dave, what are your next watches for 2016, 17? And also, which watches did you keep and why? So John's referring to my love for timepieces. And in fact, I'm not even wearing a watch in this video, which is terrible. I've just sort of sat down in the front of the camera to record this video. Um, so my watch is for 2016, 17. I've got my eye on a Seiko or Seiko Presage, uh, which seems to be great value for money. It's like a, a, a forehand with an extra complication. And I'm definitely gonna get that in. I've also just got in an Oris Moon Phase watch, which I'll be sharing in a video over on my other channel, the Luxury Lifestyle channel. And which watches did I keep? Well, I kept my two Rolexes purely because uh, one of them was purchased to mark sort of, um, sort of an achievement for me. Uh, and in fact, the other one was really bought to mark an achievement as well. So I don't think they'll ever leave my collection. Uh, but who knows what I'll do in the future? Uh, I just really love looking at the quality of craftsmanship that goes into these timepieces. And for those of you who don't know, I did just mention it briefly then, but I do have another channel called Luxury Lifestyle Channel. And uh, that is where I put all of my sort of watch reviews, uh, things like wallets, scarves, fashion, you'll see shoes on there. Uh, so do check that out. There's a link to that channel in the video description. My question to you, John, is are you a watch collector? Let me know what's in your collection as well. Ryan Barkley. Hello, Ryan, a long time viewer again. Thank you for your support. Uh, Ryan asks, do you think that these scanners, fingerprint and iris are becoming too fast to make use of the lock screen? Now I know what you're referring to here on something like the iPhone 6S Plus, if you use the fingerprint scanner to unlock your phone, you don't get to see your notifications. There is a way around that. You can just use the power on off button on the side and then you get to see your notifications before unlocking the phone. Are they becoming too fast? No, I don't think they are. They're extremely fast, but I don't think you can ever get too fast for unlocking the device. So that's my answer to that one. Uh, Luke Phillips, what's the best Apple computer that Apple has made? That is a really hard question. The best Apple computer. For me, the best Apple computer that I've got is my Mac Pro, you know, the one that looks like a trash can, purely because of the power that that's given me and the speed that that can process the videos that I produce. And I produce a lot of videos, so that's really important. So for me, that's the best Apple that, or Apple computer that they've ever made. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to answer all of these questions in this video. We're already running at 24 minutes. So I'm just gonna pick some of the uh, sort of more uh, sort of probing questions. Uh, very quick one, Peter Campbell asks, why aren't you getting the Freedom he headphones uh, from Jaybirds? I haven't been approached to review those, so maybe if they get in touch, I will. Mike Scott asks, do you think that USB-C will become more commonplace or will it be replaced by something else in the not too distant future? USB-C is relatively new, we're seeing it on more and more devices now, so I do think it will become a lot more commonplace over the next couple of years. Uh, da -da -da -da. Good question here from Naeem Khan. Considering how far tablets have come since the launch of the iPad, what would you recommend to a student for university, a laptop or a tablet? 
If you're using this for university, then you're going to be doing some sort of productivity, a lot of typing. I would have a physical keyboard. I would go for an Ultrabook, so it's nice and light to carry around. Uh, there's plenty of Windows-based uh, Ultrabooks. Uh, the Asus, uh, what was it called? The UX303A was a really good one. For me, I would choose an Apple MacBook or a 13-inch MacBook Pro if you need that bit more power. Right, which I'm going to pick a couple more. Lil Worski 0121. Uh, what car do you currently own, exact spec, and what car are you considering buying next? That is a really good question. Now, we've got a couple of cars in the family. My personal car is a BMW 118i, and it's a sport spec model, and it is a really lovely car. Now, when I bought that, which was about a year and a half, two years ago, I was so, so pleased, because I'd driven a, a BMW, or owned a BMW, many years ago, and at the time when I had the previous BMW, I ended up not being able to afford to, to run it and service it. So I was really sad to see that go. So to be able to afford a BMW again was a, a real big achievement for me and I absolutely love the brand. What one would I look to buy in the future? It would be between two really. I'd either stay with BMW and go for something like a BMW X5 or I would really love a Range Rover Evoque. I think they look fantastic whether or not that happened I don't know who knows in three four five years time I might go for something that's completely electric something really economical my tastes might change so what car do you drive let me know in the comments section below some really good questions this is funny um, this is really funny actually uh, Jane Patel would you ever be interested in trying out a VR porn sex game no, I wouldn't at all. <laughs> that did make me laugh though. That is so, so funny. Uh, Retro Nexus also asked what are your opinions of Apple potentially removing the traditional headphone port and instead using a lightning connector, apparently to make the device even thinner. Well, I think it's a move that Apple are making so that they can then produce their own lightning headphones and sell a lot more. They want people to stay within their ecosystem making the device even thinner i would rather even if they put a lightning connector for the headphones on or sorry even if they remove the three and a half millimeter headphone jack and keep this lightning connector for charging and or headphones and make it even thinner surely that's going to reduce battery life i would rather they kept it this sort of thickness or even a bit thicker and gave us a better battery i think battery life is very important uh, da, 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 da. Good question here from Dr James Fraser. Are you sponsored by Fuji? And did they provide you with your new camera system? It would be good to know that your reviews can be trusted as being unbiased. My reviews have always remained unbiased, apart from when they are marked as purely adverts and I don't actually appear in them. So I did a, a series, I think it was about a year and a half ago, where I put up a, a series of videos for Kickstarter projects. Well, obviously they weren't unbiased because it was a video made by somebody else. If it's an advert or a sponsored video where I actually appear in the video, my actual views always remain my own. And I put that in the video, it's clearly marked. With regards to the Fuji video, that was actually a purchase I made, uh, a business purchase made with my own funds. So it was not sponsored at all by Fuji. I hope that makes sense. It made sense to me. <laughs> now Darren Gator has asked a few questions. The first one is, have you used any legacy or vintage lenses? No, I haven't. Uh, what do you usually have in your camera bag? I can't answer that specifically because it's just changed and the video about this new camera, or in fact a couple of new cameras, is not coming out until after this video, so it's a little bit of a secret. But let's just say I normally carry a more compact camera, something where you can't switch the lenses out. That's all I'm gonna say at this stage, teaser I know. Uh, have you ever tested a product that did not perform well? The only one I can really remember was many years ago, and it was a battery charger with a couple of solar panels on it. I think it was made by Uniros, and the solar panels were so small, and being in the UK where we don't get a lot of sun, it never charged the batteries. 
Uh, what would you like to see in the next iPhone? I've already answered that and in fact I think uh, Sam Duffy on Twitter also asked about the new iPhone 7. Uh, mainly what I would like to see is expandable memory and I don't think we're ever going to see that in an Apple product. Uh, Shafi M asks, Dave what would be your ideal working environment? Well I enjoy where I am now actually. I've got my editing room, I've got my studio. It's a really nice comfortable environment to work in. I suppose if I really wanted to look toward the future, I would like a, a dedicated sort of office space as well. And, and that would really complete what would make me happy for working. But I'm, I'm happy as I am really, so great question though. Squishy Bullets, is the ATD worth the money or should people just stick with the 70D for now? Well, if you're buying the camera new, so you don't own one, I would probably still go for the ATD because you're buying the latest generation of the product. If you've already got the 70D, I would say don't bother upgrading. They're very, very similar cameras. And then the final question, definitely the final question. You said in your, this is from Master Cosgrove, you said in your MacBook M7 4K video test you like to use Final Cut over movie, iMovie because of the more advanced features. However, it seems the majority of your editing is just splitting and cropping up different shots you took from your camera. So why bother using a $300 product, Final Cut Pro, for what you could, for what I would consider rather simple video editing? Well, you're assuming that the only type of video editing that I do is what I showed in that particular video, and you're referring to my 4K video editing test on the MacBook. And I do a lot more projects outside of YouTube that you don't see. I run a commercial video company where I make product videos for businesses and those projects can get very, very complicated. So I use Final Cut Pro to edit those. Also, some of the videos I do on the Geek Noise channel are more complicated than just jump cuts all the way through. Some of them have got a lot of layering, some of them got effects, different titling. And iMovie, which of course is free, uh, didn't give me enough features and I moved across to Final Cut Pro many, many years ago and I'm so, so pleased that I actually made that move. So I hope that answered your question. There are a few more questions that unfortunately I'm not going to be able to fit in to this first Talking Tech Q&A. I want to thank you for asking all of them. I really do appreciate it and please do keep the questions coming. What I will do is when I used to do the Q&A videos, I used to get so many questions underneath each video and a lot of them got missed. So you can by all means leave me some questions underneath this video and I'll answer them in a comment. But when I'm going to be recording a new Talking Tech Q&A, I will ask you for questions either on YouTube or on Twitter. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the new area that I've created in the studio. I hope you enjoyed my frank answers as well. None of this was rehearsed. That was the first time that I'd actually looked through the questions. So thank you very much for all of the questions. Please do hit like on this video. Apologies if your question didn't get answered. Maybe you can ask it again for the next Q&A video. But for now, have a fantastic day wherever you are. And I'll see you in another video soon on the Geek Noise channel.